Okay, since text on the screen for damage tends to be animated, we're going to have to add a new component. It's Rigid Body 2D. And basically, what the Rigid Body does is it allows for the applying of physics. We're going to use only the bare minimum, and basically, we're just going to give it motion. So, we're going to highlight both of the damage text, click on Add Component. Like physics 2D, rigid body 2D, and really all we're going to use this for is for vertical motion. So all we need to know for this specific example is that a positive gravity scale will make an object fall towards the bottom of the screen. Negative gravity scale will make it fall flow up. So let's do a negative two, and then if you click on these individually, you'll see that they both got the gravity scale. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our script. Actually, let's just copy this. And this time it's damage text 1. didn't use brackets for the other ones, but might need them here. So again, we're doing get component. And it should just be attack power because there aren't any adjustments to it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into what's known as a prefab. So all you have to do to turn it into a prefab is you drag the object out of the hierarchy and down here into the asset area, so here it is. So just like these other assets, this is now usable in any scene, anywhere in the game, whereas this is only explicitly here. So let's go ahead and delete that. Just want to make sure we're using this. And just have to add there. Basically it just says that you can't put a number into a text. You actually have to convert it to string. So you have to do that extra step. So hero attack power is a number, whereas this is a text, so you have to convert it to string. Now what we're going to do, now that it's a prefab, it can be called upon by other objects, so it's going to be attached to the GM. And so we go into our battle flow script, and now we add a new type of variable. Save that. It'll show up here, attack damage. Now you just
just take that prefab and you drag and you drop it there. And so now the GM is aware of that object and it can now call it. So what we're going to do is since damage is done in the neither turn, what we're going to do is this. At the end of the turn, we're going to do instantiate, and that's how you call a prefab. It's called attack damage. And we want it to be at New Vector 3 is just saying that you want to give it a three coordinate location, so x, y, and z. So we'll do 0, 0, 0. And we'll say that we want to use the object's own rotation. So whichever direct direction it's facing, is the way you want it to face. That should do it. Let's see if we get any errors. We do not. So let's test it. And there it is, a pairing. Except is wrong. So the reason why the variable is wrong is because when an object is instantiated, it'll take the name of the object and it appends the word clone to it. So we just have to make one change. So this is actually going to be attached to the instantiated object. So the name will actually have the word clone in it. So you can either put in a statement to change the name, like uh, for void start up here you could say okay change the name to just damage text or you can just append the word clone onto it so now it should work and there we go so let's tweak a few aspects of the animated text now so first of all it moves kind of fast on the screen so let's give it some linear drag. So let's click on the prefab and then add a drag of, say, a four. And let's test that. So now you don't really have that acceleration as much. You might want the acceleration. That's your choice. At this point, it's really just a matter of preference. Also, it's appearing kind of low on the screen, so let's move our enemy down a little bit. So just click on him, drag on the arrow. Let's make one more change. So we'll go to the anchor. It's anchored to the upper left, so it's not quite centered. So let's try this middle center. Much better. Now it's dead centered. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our other damage text also into a prefab. So again, you just drag and drop it. That turns into a prefab. We'll delete the original from there. And now let's just make some of these changes. So we made this center, and we gave it a linear drag of four. Now what we're going to do 
is we're going to go into our we're going to go into our script for text control I'm going to tell it to look for the other prefab. And this should be how to make this work. We're going to go into the battle flow, and we already have a conditional area for if a DOT is applied, so we just have to put the instantiate in here. And actually, before we do that, we need to make a variable. This one a little bit lower on the screen. This one. not liking this with the pre-fill. It's okay, as soon as I save this it'll be okay. Takes care of the error. So, uh, instantiate DOT damage. So now we just have to say that this is the DOT damage, and it should work now. Let's take a look. So I'm going to hit number three, and sure enough, it did 30 points of damage. Now, if you want to differentiate it, you can change color as well. So, you can just click on this and say you want color. You just click on this. So, basically, I clicked on the prefab, then I click on the color, and then say we make it red. Now, we try this again. So now, it helps differentiate the type of damage.